Hi everyone, I'm Ruasi from Google, and thanks for joining. It's my pleasure to present our work of improved deep and cross network for better feature injection learning and also share some of the practical lessons learned. Uh, so let's first look at the motivations. Assume that you are going to sell a blender to a customer. And then all of the customer's past purchase histories, for example, whether she or he has purchased bananas or has read cooking books, are single features, and they're of first order. And when two purchasing events happen at the same time, there is a higher likelihood for this customer to click on your ad. And this is a cost feature, which is of second order. And you can see that we could potentially have more predictive cross features if we go even higher orders. The challenges, though, of identifying these effective feature crosses especially in recommender systems, is that our feature space is large and sparse. And this will lead to exhaustive searching. And sometimes we would need to involve many feature engineering. Traditional neural networks are able to learn cross features, but they can only do so inefficiently and approximately. So what are the common remedies for this? There are two common things. One is to simply make the model much wider and deeper. And this also aligns well with the uh, universal approximate theorem for DNNs. But this would also make your model much slower to serve. And another common thing is to leverage those explicit and implicit feature crosses. And this direction has heavily been studied in academia. So explicit feature crosses means uh, there is an explicit formula for your feature interaction or feature cross with controllable interaction order. For example, x1 times x2. While implicit feature crosses refer to those interactions that we are able to learn from DNs. And there are actually many work exist. Some insert the designed explicit features in between the embedding and the DNN while others combine them in the logic level. And among all these works, we're particularly interested in deep and cross network due to its uh, elegant and uh, effective structures. However, productionizing it isn't easy, and I will tell you why. So the plot you see here is an overview of DCN, deep and cross network, uh, where it has two parallel networks, DNN, which learns implicit feature interactions, and a cross network, which was designed to learn explicit and bounded degree feature interactions. And there are two main challenges for productionizing. One is that the baseline is very strong. Many of the production models are highly optimized by many ML practitioners and researchers over many years. And also the production data is of much larger scale and has more complex distributions than the public ones. And another challenge lies in the limitations of DCN itself, where the cross network has very limited expressiveness. And this has prevented it from modeling or learning those like very complex feature interaction patterns. And also the capacities between the deep and the cross network are very unbalanced. Considering these limitations, we have made several critical improvements for putting DCN into practice. And we refer to the new model as DCNV2. So DCNV2 has been successfully de deployed in quite a few recommender systems across Google. And it has also been open sourced as part of TensorFlow recommenders. And let's expand on DCNV2. Uh, so this shows an overall structure of DCNV2 where the left adopts the stack structure while the right adopts the parallel structure. And a core component for each is a cross network, which is actually very similar to the one in the DCN, the original DCN, where it consists of multiple cross layers and also the highest interaction order would increase with layer depth. And the difference is on the design of each cross layer. And let's zoom in here. So the plot you see here is one cross layer in DCNV2, where x is an input to a layer 
W is the uh, associated matrix to be learned. The element represents, um, the symbol represents element-wise multiplication, and X now is a vector that contains the original features, and we typically set this to be the embedding layer. We see that this formula is quite elegant and fairly easy to implement in different environments. And it also does a feature crossing we would like. So to give you a better uh, picture of what it does, we can actually rewrite it uh, into the following formula, where we first implicitly create all the discord cross pairs, and then immediately projects it back to an embedding space of dimension D. And then uh, this is to keep the efficiency of the model. And then uh, the optimization will stack those informatic crosses by assigning different weights to a matrix. So here is a toy example of two features, user and query. So when your weight matrix looks like this, it models interaction between user query and query to user. And when your weight matrix uh, is changed to this, it models interaction between user query and query to query. So this toy example has given you a flavor of what the cross layer models. And we could actually be more rigorous on this. Say we stack our cross layers together, and then the final cross network would reproduce a polynomial class of order L plus one with only order D square parameters, where D is the input dimension. And there are actually two different uh, perspectives to view it. One is bitwise perspective, which means we consider each element of your input as a unit. And another is feature-wise perspective, which means we consider each feature embedding as a unit. And for both uh, perspectives, we can see that formulas show that it was able to create all the feature interactions up to order L plus one. And then the question is, uh, when would DCMV2 be more efficient than ReLUs, which are the layers widely used in many of the production models? And we would like to first answer this question in a clean setting where we know what a ground truth model is. And we create two uh, different synthetic data sets. One has a relatively simple cross patterns or monomials. One has a much complex one. And we use four different models to feed the data, where the first three has a very similar number of parameters, while the last one has magnitudes more. And we can see that there are two major observations here. Uh, first is that DCMV2 remains accurate for very complex cross patterns, while DCN wasn't able to achieve that. And also values are inefficient, even with a much wider and deeper structure. And this is for the quality. And for the efficiency side, many of the production models actually has a very uh, strict requirements on the serving latency. So this has motivates us to further reduce the um, model cost. And we adopt the approach of low rank approximations for the matrices in DCM. And the reason we can do that is because we have practically observed that the learned matrix in the cross layer is numerically low rank. And this has enabled us to approximate this dense matrix by a low rank matrix. And uh, this is great in the sense that the structure is fairly easy to implement. And also the metamor computations uh, is pretty fast in practice. Uh, and we could like um, do better in quality than the vanilla low rank version by adopting the idea a mixture of experts. So the high level idea is that Instead of relying on one single low rank uh, DC expert to learn all the feature crosses, we can use multiple of them. And each would learn feature interactions in a subspace. And then we leverage multiple such experts using a gating mechanism. And this would allow us to adaptively combine the feature crosses uh, learned in different subspaces. And now that we have introduced uh, DCMV2 and also its cost efficient version, and we would like to see how it perform on data sets where the ground truth model is unknown. And we'll first look at Critio. So Critio is a pretty popular data set for 
predicting click-through rate. And we have compared our methods with many of the state-of-art algorithms. And uh, very importantly, we have done a thorough hyperparameter search, hyperparameter tuning in a large search space for all of the models. And there are many interesting observations, and you can find details in our paper. Here we want to share some of the highlights. So first, uh, many state of art performance are dominated by the performance of DNN. And DNN itself is actually a very strong baseline when we properly tune it. And also for our method, a cross net, which means we only use cross layers only, it delivered on par performance as MRPs with same sized um, parameters. So this is actually a very surprising result for us. So we wanted to investigate this further uh, in different model families and uh, data sets. And for um, the production data, we have also achieved significant gains for uh, both offline metrics and also online key business metrics. And the gains here are actually much more pronounced than those uh, from the public data sets. And this is probably because that uh, the production data is a, of much larger scale and has more complex uh, distributions than the public ones. And another interesting uh, perspective we wanted to share is that uh, DCMV2 helps us to understand our model better. And the plot here shows uh, one of the learned metrics in the cross layer where darker pixels represent larger weights and the columns and rows represent real features. And we see that there is some very clear and interesting pattern that shows us what feature classes the model consider are important. And this is uh, pretty important for many fields, uh, for example, ML fairness. All right, and in the end, we would like to share some of our practical lessons learned when productionizing DCMV2. So for uh, the quality side, uh, there are questions we want to answer, for example, uh, how to use the cross network, especially where to put the, uh, this, uh, the cross layer, uh, how to organize it, and uh, what the number of layers to use. And we summarize our observations here. So we found out that the closer to the input, the better the performance is. So we typically would insert cross layers in between the input and the DN. And also easier stacking uh, different cross layers to create high order feature interactions or concatenating them to create complementary feature interactions all work pretty well in practice. Uh, and in terms of number of layers, we realized that when we go beyond two layers, uh, there's still some quality gain, but the gains start to plateau a little bit for many of the models. And uh, in terms of cost, if we do want to use low rank approaches to reduce the cost, choosing uh, the rank to be roughly a quarter of your input size has consistently preserved the quality for us uh, as compared to the full rank version. And the journey of uh, putting DCM from research idea into production uh, has many challenges and we really appreciate the help uh, from everyone along the road. And also thank you for listening to this uh, talk. Uh, if you're interested to learn more, feel free uh, to check out our paper, tutorial, and GitHub. Thank you.